Hi everyone, it's Jamie from the Lenzero team and we've been getting a lot of questions and it feels like there's lots of information around the metaverse, what it is, and uh, unsurprisingly, I think there's lots of misinformation too about what it is or it isn't, what's included, what's not, how I should think about it, should it be scary, should it not? So this month, I'll just go through a few of these questions that we've received. Hopefully there's value here. If you have any questions as a result of these answers, please reach out, we'd love to have a chat. So I think first and foremost, one of the first questions we get is, does the metaverse exist yet? And I think this question kind of presupposes that there's A, only one metaverse, and B, it kind of is in a, in a state that exists or doesn't. And I think the answer is, yes, the metaverse exists yet. There's actually multiple metaverses, which again, can be confusing, but there are just like with uh, the internet, so to speak, having multiple web pages, and could you say, you know, what point in time did the internet exist? Did the internet exist when the very first web page was created? Or did the internet exist when there was 10? Or did the internet exist once Google or other search engines helped make it more accessible? We're kind of in that state now where, yeah, there are actually a number of places you can go to experience the metaverse. So the metaverse does exist. And then I think it depends on your definition for what the end state of the metaverse around what this will all look like kind of end state. So flipping to next question, which is, can anyone get into the metaverse and is it open for everyone? So I think kind of this is a maybe a piggyback or a follow up to the last question. And again, it will depend. It will depend on what metaverse you're talking about. So for example, there are many open metaverse type experiences that you can go and participate in. For example, Meta uh, Horizon Worlds has a available, like it's available if you have a Quest device, you can go and access it, no problem, it's free. Of course, the barrier to entry is the physical device itself. And I think that's true for any metaverse experience right now, it is kind of hardware dependent. So for the most part to experience the metaverse, that's the biggest barrier, so to speak, to experiencing it is having a device of some sort. So how do I get into the metaverse? I think, like I like just mentioned, kind of that first step is you need a device, whether that's an Oculus or a Quest, as they're called now, or other devices from other vendors. Um, many of them have different ecosystems that you can purchase or use or download applications, similar to how you buy a mobile phone. So if you're going to get an iPhone, for example, you know, can you start using it right away? 100%. But the richness of that experience is enhanced once you start downloading apps from the app store. That's very similar to getting into the metaverse. You get a headset, you experience it, you download applications, and now you can kind of ride a roller coaster or go rock climbing or, you know, wield a lightsaber. All of these things are possible, you know, kind of once you're in the metaverse. Uh, next question we get is, do I need VR? This feels like a very philosophical question. And you could say, do I need the internet? Do I need electricity? And, you know, dep again, depends on, on how you fundamentally define the word need. Uh, I think fundamentally, you probably don't need VR, <laughs> just like you don't need electricity. It's what's the purpose or what are you trying to achieve? And does VR actually help enhance that experience or <laughs> enhance that objective? So from that perspective, there are absolutely a number of use cases where VR plays a very tangible role that adds value and can be an asset to whatever it is that you're trying to do, education, etc. Uh, but I think at this root, you probably couldn't say that you truly need VR. How is the metaverse being used in real life? One individual use, corporate, and I think uh, there's probably many of the definitions. Microsoft has kind of a standard one where they think of the metaverse as three different experiences. There's a the consumer metaverse, which right now is primarily dominated by gaming ex um, experiences. So gaming applications, et cetera. So it's really about the end user and, 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 a, and an individual perspective. There's what they call the commercial metaverse, which is all about you know business to business interactions and using it from an office worker or a knowledge worker perspective. And finally, there's the industrial metaverse, which is really all around frontline use cases and kind of industrial um, use cases like, for example, in hospital, in uh, healthcare, uh, manufacturing, shop floors, that sort of thing. So there's, there is 
uh, many uses. And then there are, you know, like I said, it's both individual and corporate applications that can be applied for the metaverse. So who is leading the metaverse? Uh, again, I think that kind of depends on your perspective. If you go just purely by market share, Oculus or Quest by far leads the marketplace from both a market share perspective, uh, richness of, of its ecosystem, a number of metrics, probably revenue per that's kind of floating through the ecosystem. That's not to say they're going to win or that there's only going to be one winner. Um, but right now, if you're to say who is leading it, it's definitely Meta and the Quest ecosystem. So last question for this month is I've heard people saying that the metaverse is not going to be successful. What are your thoughts around this? So I think, again, this this depends. There are, um, on your perspective, I absolutely think mixed reality, metaverse will be successful. Do we know what those end use cases are? Do we know in which way it's totally going to unfold? Not yet, I think. But again, when you when the advent of the smartphone, or even before you get to the smartphone, when you just got to the phone, did somebody think that we would end up in a, in a situation where everyone had a mobile phone, everyone was using applications of that mobile phone, and that mobile phone was basically your camera, your computer, your communication device, you know, kind of all of those things. So similarly, where we are right now with Metaverse, I don't think we know what the end state's going to be. All we know is, unlike in previous instances, we actually have a piece of tech that people want that enhances people's experiences. And I think this is why I feel it's going to be successful and will be a thing. It's because right now, for example, mobile is so engaging because it's very engaging, almost addictive, right? You scroll, for example, on social media, or you play games, and it's very easy and accessible and engaging. Now, what if you could do all of those things, but be far more immersed into the experience in a way that felt natural? And we're not there yet from a hardware perspective, but it doesn't feel like we're far off either in terms of how that hardware will advance and how those experiences will adapt over time. So I do feel, yeah, the metaverse will be successful. We don't yet know what the end state's going to be. And that's, uh, that's really clear to me. So uh, last thing I'll say is we've been some, getting some questions around Meta. So for example, you know, how is Meta doing? Uh, there's been lots of news and I feel like it's, it tends to be negative and sometimes it's earned and sometimes I feel it's not earned. In this instance, if you look at just the data and I'm gonna measure how are they doing based on stock price, you know, Meta is definitely down from kind of their COVID highs of speak. So there was, you know, I think this is true across the entire tech sector where there was a huge bubble companies were arguably over um, overvalued based off of you know where the the trend lines are going as a direct result of the pandemic and now that you know kind of there's been a correction so to speak inside of the tech marketplace all across the board and that's not just meta that's microsoft amazon google you name it all of them have made large layoffs they've all had an impact to their stock price and so I think when we look at it and say, well, how is Meta doing? And Meta right now is actually, their stock is valued higher than it was six months ago. And in the last six months, it's actually when they've been doing, you know, kind of this reset, so to speak, in terms of layoffs and all sorts of other stuff inside of the tech market system, the tech ecosystem. So, uh, you know, is Meta doing all right? Yeah, I, I think they actually are. Um, they have their investments inside of the, the Metaverse, the Reality Labs um, portion. And it uh, looks like they're, they are, not looks like it, they are still leading the pack, so to speak, in terms of uh, investment inside of this ecosystem. And I think time will tell, obviously, whether they're gonna emerge from this stronger than when they entered. But I think it's safe to say that right now, uh, there's kind of established a steady state. Their stock price continues to increase and has been increasing. And I think they're in a good spot. So if you have any questions, please feel free to let us know. Reach out to us at engage.line0.com. Happy to have a conversation with you.